Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day in New York. My name is Claire Lewis, and I will be the host of your podcast this morning as we discuss belonging. Before we dive in, let's talk about belonging. What is it? I mean, to be completely honest, belonging is, it really is this infinitely faceted word with countless meanings and interpretations. There's not just one definition of it. And that dilemma in itself, that's the bulk. I, that's the meat and potatoes of our podcast today. Truthfully, every person has their own idea of what it means to belong. And with that, every person has their own idea of how to find it. So for us and our focus today, we're going to define belonging as being welcome in a community of people. This sense of belonging, this is something way more intangible. By belonging to this community, you're welcome and you're embraced in every single aspect of your persona. This community that accepts you, it's one that won't stifle you, but it's that one that brings out the best in you, that stimulates that beautiful character and personality that makes you, you. And people are going about finding this in a variety of ways, including some of the authors we're gonna discuss, Eula Abyss, Ta-Nehisi Coates, Michelle Zahner, um, among others like poet, Timothy D. Pratt, artist, Lucy Liu, and good old Mayo Clinic. Hate gives identity. We name the hated strangers and are thus conformed in the tribe, Ta-Nehisi Coates. My belonging was something to prove, something that was always in the hands of other people to be given and never my own to take, to decide which side I was on, whom I was allowed to align with. Michelle's honor. They use my personality as a means to discredit me, telling me I'm this or that, placing me in a category because of my choice. Can't they see? I'm just like they, and they like me. If you strip away all the matter, we are all the same. Timothy D. Pratt. Each of these authors, each of us, have our own unique experiences on our quest to find where with whom we belong. And as, as for the authors who, whose quotations I just said, it appears to them that belonging really is not something that's in our own hands, but instead the hands of others, maybe even the hands of a higher power. But if this is idea that we have in mind about belonging, then why even try? If everything we know and search for is predetermined, predestined, simply based on a four-letter word that seems to govern every single facet of society, then what is the point? For Coates, for Zahner, for Pratt, as they grew up, where they belonged was forced upon them. They truthfully had no choice in the development of their own identity, their own persona, and finding the people who would cultivate that persona. Instead, they're confined to these restrictive barriers that society has formed purely based on arbitrary concepts. And these groups, there's no flexibility with them. There's really no escape. Yet, this is what they and we continue to look for. And in some cases, we may find it. Once we find these places, you bring yourself to a new level. You find yourself elevated in a sense because these places to us where we found belonging, they're holy because it's not just these places where we find belonging. It's the people that are in those places who you find belonging with. So for Coates, for example, it's the Mecca. In his words, he describes the Mecca as the, cross the crossroads of the black diaspora. It's a machine crafted to capture and concentrate the dark energy of all African peoples and inject it directly into the student body. For Zahner, on the other hand, it's H-Mart, which she, word for word, claims to be a beautiful, holy place because it's filled with these people who understand her and who are, um, quote-unquote, full of faith that they'll find something they can't find anywhere else. And, but what is this that they can't find anywhere else? It's belonging. It's finding your metaphorical home. Lucy Liu is an up-and-coming artist who also, she shows us in her artwork 
the human struggle for belonging. She's working, she just came out with one collection in particular, it's called Lost and Found, and it's based on this perception that when people don't belong, it really is an uprooting factor in their lives. She describes the motivation for creating her pieces when she said to um, an article, when I see something on the ground, I always feel badly for those items because they feel like they once had a purpose, once had a home, and they were no longer being utilized, they were disregarded. I mean, to me, you could say these items are in no man's land, but these items, they're not just scraps of trash. These items, they're reflective of the people that are in no man's land. They're reflective of what these people are torn into. When you're in no man's land, this quest for belonging, it consumes you. It, it takes up your entire life and it becomes all you are and it destroys you sometimes. Eula Biss, she's one of these victims because by the end of her novel, Notes from No Man's Land, it's evident that she is still lost. Out of all the countries she's traveled to, all the places she's been, not one of them has contained the people that truly make her feel at home. She's been to Mexico, she's been all across the United States, not one of these places. And essentially, she is like one of these scraps on the ground. She describes that after she leaves her family, she would never again feel as essential, as integral, as she had once felt among them. And this is so sad. As sad as this predicament is, an even worse truth is that there are hundreds, perhaps even hundreds of thousands of people of us who are out there struggling with this, especially for people who are mixed race. Zahner, for example, is Korean American. And she points out in her memoir, Crying in H Mart, that she could never be of both worlds, only half in and half out. And the trouble with this too is that all of these feelings, all of these emotions, they're all based on such arbitrary concepts. I mean, what is race? There's all of these authors who are struggling to find belonging, to search for their identity. Race all seems to be a factor in this. So really, what is it? I mean, later in his poem, the one that we read earlier by Timothy D. Pratt, he talks about this. He describes that race is just a word, simply a word, not a barrier to be crossed, not an obstacle to overcome, not a crutch upon which I support my very existence, a word. Race is just a word. Even Coates, he talks about this too. When at the very beginning of his work, he says that Americans believe in the reality of race as a defined, indubitable feature of the natural world. Racism, the need to ascribe bone-deep features to people and then humiliate, reduce, and destroy them inevitably follows from this inalterable condition. Like he said, this is, this is destructive. I mean, in this world of complete hopelessness, how do we even continue to fight, to search, and to go beyond our prescribed limits that have been forced upon us by society? I mean, just out of curiosity, I wondered, is there any medical documentation, any like tried and true scientific method for finding belonging? I mean, sure enough, Mayo Clinic did not disappoint. Listen, these are their five effective steps for finding belonging. One, make an effort. Two, be mindful of others. Three, keep and teach an open mind. Four, practice an attitude of acceptance. Five, validate action. This is so interesting to me because personally to me, four out of the five of these steps have to do with other people. Why should we care about what other people think? This is exactly why people struggle to find belonging because at the end of the day, it's not about what other people think. It's not about caring what they think about you, it's knowing that you are unchanging, beautiful you. And the people who acknowledge that, who exhilarate and inspire that persona, your persona, are the ones you belong with. You should not have to do any work to belong, to fit in with this community that you are naturally drawn to. And, and that is our problem. Because when I say you should not have to do any work to fit in, I don't mean that you might not have to do any work to find these people. The work comes from, or the work doesn't come from, when you find these people, your fusion with them should be effortless. It should be seamless. You belong with them and they belong with you. And 
that is that community. That is that home that is created when you finally get that true sense of belonging. And sometimes you don't find these people out of a conscious effort. I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And ultimately, you will end up where you should be placed. But that doesn't mean that you should never stop trying. This world, this world is hard. It wants to knock you down and it wants to watch you fail. But if we are all in it together, if we could all just realize that we are all just humans who are going through the same relative struggles, imagine what our world could be. If we could break past these barriers that we've created, these arbitrary walls based on these words and these concepts, don't you think it would be so much easier to find your people to feel at ease in this world of growth and cultivation that's been created? I mean, truthfully, it all just sounds too good to be true, but maybe someday it won't be. But I mean, that's talking about the future. And as for now, you just gotta work with what we have. Everyone belongs somewhere. And ultimately, it's, it's up to you to find where with whom that is. And the hardest part of this search is that you're not searching for something tangible. If you do, you might end up like Eulabis, lost in no man's land. No, you're searching for community. You are searching for the people who bring you to your metaphorical home. These people are the ones who accept you and all your uniqueness. And the special part about this is, this is not belonging to a mass, but belonging at the personal, individual level. And with that, I wish you luck on your endeavors. Thank you for joining me this morning.